Good morning. you listening to Overcoming Life. I am your host, Opal Bailey. I have with me Pastor Gary, the senior pastor of Destiny Christian Church here in Merritt Island, and he would like to share with you how you can overcome life on this Monday morning. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. It's good to be with you. Thank you very much. What is it you want to share with our listeners today? If you're going to live long on earth, you're going to have to be an overcomer. You will be overcome. And so God's word is all set to keep us and make us and have us as overcomers of this earth. You know, I think it's so sad to see the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, his people, his representatives on earth, people made in his image and likeness, always walking around discouraged, defeated, um, negative, when we should be the most positive, happy, exciting people on the face of the earth. Because number one, the Bible says Christ in me, the hope of glory. So if Christ is literally in you and you have the hope of eternity and glory and the glory of God in you, wherever we go, there should be so much of his presence and glory just emanating from us. So is that is that like having a salt shaker? And wherever you go, the little, you shake your salt, basically. And that's what's really important, is that we shake the salt. The biggest <laughs> problem is that many people keep the salt in the shaker. Uh, I, I think there's a title of a book that's out of the salt shaker. Uh, the salt is good in the shaker, but if you don't ever pour it out, it can't go forth with the function it was intended. Mm-hmm. You know, salt is a preserver. Salt is a flavor. Salt does so much but it doesn't do a thing until it's poured out. And I think that's an issue many times with many of our Christian lives. We stay inside the little shaker, um, maybe the little shaker of our churches, and then go into the little shaker of our cars, and then go back to the little shaker of our homes, and the salt never goes anywhere, and it never does anything, and it never helps anybody. And we just go around saying, I am salt. It is wonderful to be salt. Salt is the most powerful thing on earth, and all they ever see is your advertisement. And they've never felt the effects of the salt of the earth being poured out upon them. Wow, that's really good. So you're saying that we need to look beyond our situations, look beyond our four walls, our home, and be that example. Give out that love and yes. that attention. And, is that what you're saying? It's all about being a doer. Yeah. You know, I went to a church in San Diego, uh, Miles McPherson, and uh, it's called Rock Church. I love that church. I just had a blast. I liked it so much I wanted to stay there. But uh, he had been a San Diego Charger that had been, uh, he had been up in the air for this tremendous catch. And instead, someone caught his knees, took him out of football, which was his life. And... Um, through time and meeting people and God, uh, he, he overcame all of the disappointments, the crash of his career and everything he had set his eyes on his whole life. And God ended up turning him into uh, a pastor in San Diego that is probably, in my opinion, doing more in that region than anyone. Um, I think he has like 150 to 180 ministries out of his church. He has other plants of the church. They're ministering and doing, and they are getting out of the salt shaker into every aspect of life. They have bikers ministries and skateboard ministries and surfing ministries and ministers to every area of town and every part of society. And so, you know, uh, he had a, he has a book and a shirt. It said, just do something. And, you know, that little phrase just impacted me. Mm -hmm. I thought, just do something. We're always talking about what we're going to do or studying about what we're going to do or declaring what we're going to do. But do we ever do anything? And I think many Christians don't do something. And uh, always thinking, I need to learn more, think more, study more, just do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it might not be perfect, but something is better than nothing. And as you begin to practice, you'll get better. And so God has called us to be doers. So why do you feel that we don't do it? Is it because of fear or a, you know, a single mindedness of our own lives that our lives is more important or what do you think? I think just like the apostle Paul told, um, young Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love 
a power and a sound mind. And fear is a huge thing in the life of people. Um, you know, coming through school, uh, high school, college, one of the biggest fears people had many times was speech class. I have to actually stand up in front and talk to somebody. I'm so afraid. Well, most of the time they were people that were as afraid as you were. They had no more to say than you did. And they were going to be very loving no matter what you said and supportive. But people are so afraid of the unknown. And many times they miss their call in life. They miss great things in life just because of something called fear, which is in most cases, you know, the the thing that never happens, the thing that we really never have to worry about. And fear stops our lives. And we need to realize that there's no reason to live our lives in fear. Uh, the Bible says that we were made in Genesis in the, in the exact image and likeness of creator God. Well, that alone should give us great abilities and great thoughts and great confidence. You know, in the book of Ephesians, it says that God has given us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And it's like people will go around saying, well, I don't have anything and I don't have any blessings and I don't have any gifts and I can't do anything. Well, if he's giving me every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, the question should be is what do I need not to do because I can do so much. I can do everything. And the apostle Paul said that I can do all things through Christ Jesus instead of minimizing what I can do. I have to just do the things that I have time for because I can be doing tons of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think we should be ready to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, everywhere you look in the Bible where they were crying out to Jesus in the middle of great needs or in or one of the prophets, it was, well, I don't have anything. And Jesus says, what's in your hand? Rise up with what's in your hand and I will multiply it. We want him to multiply it while we sit there and stare at it. He's ready to multiply it when we get off our duffs and do something <laughs> with it and, you know, start using what we mm -hmm, got. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing as when Jesus has said, when the scriptures rather said that Jesus went about doing good. Even, you know, he was God. He was Jesus himself. But even still, he reached out to others. He did something. He did. And he also didn't do it by himself. He had a whole group. He had his 12 showing them how to get out and make an impact on someone's life. It's not all about you. Cause was it, didn't he tell one of the, I don't know if it was, was his disciples or something. He said, well, let me, okay, I want to follow you, but let me go and bury my father. Let me go do what I want to do first. And he said, no, you come and go, you, you do something. And that's what he's looking for us to do. You know, we can do so much with what we have right now. If we'll begin to do it, he wants to just multiply that in life. And, um, you know, Jesus said his whole purpose in, in Luke 4. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me too. And basically it was, wasn't a huge thing. Preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom to prisoners, to release the oppressed and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's all. And that's everything he did was encompassed in that one mm -hmm. statement at the very beginning of his ministry that was prophesied about him way back in Isaiah 61. So listeners, you have the ability to go out and to be all that God called you to be and to do everything that God is putting you to do if you make a choice to do so. I encourage you today as we begin the beginning of the week to take hold of what God is putting in your life and what he's putting in your hands, as Pastor Gary was sharing, and to begin to do. No more of being the spectator Let's go out and be participators. God bless you for listening to Overcoming Life. I'm your host, Opal Bailey. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.